In order to deploy the cluster, we are going to use the newly released Recover Point Deployment Manager tool. Once you've installed this tool, simply log in as admin and you have a number of options, including replacement and addition of RPAs. In this case, we are going to use the Recover Point Installer Wizard, which presents you with a checklist of items that you must complete before installing the cluster, which we have already done. Next, you specify a configuration file, and then you specify all the environment details that are relevant to this Recover Point cluster as a whole. So the number of sites, the number of RPAs per site, the WAN IP type, and the remote replication protocol, which could be IP or now fiber channel in the newer releases of RecoverPoint. You also need to specify individual site names as well as time zones, management IP type, domain names, DNS servers, and the NTP server, which should only be specified on one site. Next, you give the individual details for the first site, including subnet masks, gateways, and management or floating IP address. This management IP address is in addition to those assigned to each RPA, and it allows us to connect to the cluster to view the configuration and status of the objects within the cluster itself. You then specify the management IP addresses for RPA1 and RPA2, and likewise the WAN IP addresses for RPA1 and RPA2. In this case, we have both on the same subnet. Finally, you specify the advanced settings for the first site, if any apply, and then repeat these steps for the secondary site. Once you've entered all the details for both sites, then supply the box MGMT credentials used earlier on each RPA, and then specify if you want to install one or both sites as part of this process. The tool will then validate that the RPAs exist at the addresses you supplied, and then goes ahead and starts to apply the configuration. For the first RPA in each site, it will pause and ask you to specify the repository volume from a list of detected LUNs, and request authority to format that volume. For every subsequent RPA in that site, it will simply connect to that same repository volume. Repeat these steps for site B. Once at the summary screen, the cluster is now operational, and you have the option to automatically launch the Recover Point Management application. Log in as admin, at which point you will be prompted to install your site-specific license. Here we have already installed our license, so our next step is to add the new splitters as detected by the RPAs. Because we are using the Clarion Array splitter, we need to provide some additional details about the splitters including the IP addresses of both SPA and SPB, as well as some credentials which have appropriate access to the array. Repeat for all relevant local and remote splitters, which should result in a status screen that shows all the splitters as green. Finally, to verify that replication is working successfully, we are going to create a consistency group, which contains a simple exchange server consisting of three volumes, one for the operating system, one for the exchange databases, and one for the exchange logs. We are going to create this in a CLR configuration, so that we are concurrently maintaining both local and remote replicas of the exchange server. We give each replica a meaningful name so that we can easily identify them later, and we will leave the protection, journal, and advanced settings of each replica at their defaults for the purposes of this simple test. Note that the LUNs we are selecting for the production, CDP, and CRR copies are all listed as type VRAID. This means that they are thin provisioned. RecoverPoint fully supports thin provisioned LUNs for these roles, though the journal LUNs still need to be traditional thick LUNs. Now all we need to do is to sit back and wait while RecoverPoint performs an initial synchronization to both the CDP and CRR replicas. Once the system has initiated the syncs, we can see a significant amount of traffic being transferred between the virtual RPAs. Here we can see more detail using the statistics summary for the exchange consistency group. And a little while later, we can see the initialization reaching completion, and the consistency group is seen to be continuously replicating the production system to both our local and remote replicas. And there you have it a fully functional virtualized recover point environment thank you for watching and please look out for related videos on how to replace a virtual rpa 
how to provide HA functionality and move a virtual RPA to a new host, as well as Site Recovery Manager integration.